you enjoyed Base Bears the movie. So I understand that I'll be talking to some local up and coming filmmakers. And from what I understand, you guys have questions and you want to discuss how Space Bears was made and some questions that you may have for myself or for the girls. Thank you, Mike, Madison, Cameron, for your movie and coming to the studio so we can ask questions. We would like to start the questions about developing the story for the movie. What age range did you intend for, did you did you intend it to be for, and why bears? Actually, Space Bears started off as basically three to five when I first created the whole uh, series. Uh, Madison was only five or six years old. At the time, it was geared towards that age range, but as she got older, the characters sort of got older with her. So. The age range now is actually from three on up to adult, really. <laughs> Why bears? How did you think of the story? It's an interesting story. I wrote another script that had space bears as one of the lines. Uh, one of the characters in another script just goes, Whoa, space bears, what is that? That got such a reaction to the point where everybody kept talking about that line, space bears, space bears, space bears, and it just... I decided one day um, just to make a short little cartoon with Maddie as the voice. This character, Becca, that you named, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. yep. From there, it's where it is today. Well, when Space Bears started, it was uh, mainly about Becca and Zoe going on adventures, right? Sometimes they would learn a thing or two, you know, learn about the flower gem, mm -hmm. right? They learned about plants. <laughs> plants, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so some of the, they were a little bit more educational, you know, uh, for example, the flower gem, they learn about what goes into making flowers grow and things like that. The lava gem learns about volcanoes. When we got to this point, wanted to tell more of a story as an adventure, or more of a less educational, more of a kind of a sit back and watch kind of thing. Um, so for that, you know, we, we needed a good antagonist because there was none. And really this was born during the pandemic. So, you know, Glops really came from virus or like a bacteria. So that's kind of the, the birth of where the glops came from. And that was a great platform for an antagonist to go against Becca and Zoe. How did King Glop become evil? And does King Glop have a reason for his greediness? It's a good question. Why is King Glop so greedy? We don't really see that in the film. There is some backstory there. Working on right now where this is going to go. We are leaving it with Super Action Space Bears, and Super Action Space Bears is going to talk more about the Glops and where they're from and who they are and why they are who they are, and we're going to learn about more about the Super Action Space Bears and their whole story. So it's a whole other kind of section of Space Bears uh, that we're going to be working on in the upcoming year. The gem itself is made up of four separate gems, and I think we wanted each piece to have its own color. When all four of these gems were put together, it created this kind of one big gem. And there's another episode uh, that we have that was actually the bigger adventure at the time, uh, where we expanded the universe a little bit, because first it was just Becca and Zoe, Cameron and Maddie. We had some more of Maddie's friends kind of jump on as some characters. At the time, I wrote a script that incorporated all of her friends while maintaining somewhat of a story of an adventure. Um, and that's where the friendship gem was actually born. And um, they, with the help of her new friends, she finds all these pieces and puts together this gem. Not, and then as it says in the beginning of the film, it not, not knowing that it's the one thing that'll stop this evil king that's taking over the galaxy. I would like to ask about the process of making, my, making the movie. My question is, how is the animation done? Computer animation, a software package is formally known that I use as, as Anime Studio. Now it's called Moho, I believe it's like version 13 now. It was something I wanted to learn. So I decided to use Space Bears at the time, motivation to learn how to use this pro uh, program. Early on, I created a very, very early pilot. You remember the pilot where they find the space gems with the big drill and the test run to not only animate a character for the girls, but also could I use this software? Could it do what I wanted it to do? Uh, and I just basically self-taught myself, you know? Uh, plenty of tutorials out there that you can uh, learn anything nowadays. 
created this you know pilot episode that was a lot of fun and it was so much fun and everybody really enjoyed it that I decided to do another one but I wanted to improve and I improved all the space bears gave them more animation and uh, pushed my limits a little bit more and then I just did another one and another one and another one and then eventually Maddie was like I want to start helping so Maddie started helping me uh, at first it was just designing things right you just you know I asked uh, we I said, also had a narrator that's right the first one did have a narrator yes. yep um, but I asked Maddie, I said, tell me what you think this would look like or draw what you think that would look like. And then, uh, and then she started getting involved with the story and the writing, mm -hmm. um, towards like Adventure 9, I think was your first one that you really had a big influence on the, the sleepy fairies, right? No, that wasn't it the Rainbow Space Gym? The Rainbow Space Gym? Or, the, yeah, because I remember like designing the trees. The oh, book, that's right. The yes. Puff at yeah. like Quinnipiac. Yep. You design. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This is, uh, well, first we record, right? Um, yes. No, I, we first I, we write it. For, well, first we write it, but uh, the process is we record all the voices. Cameron and Maddie and all of her friends and uh, some of the other talent, they come down and we record, we give them the script and we record the lines, uh, line by line. And um, I then empty. take those lines and animate to the lines. Uh, and sometimes I use the performance of how they actually deliver the line and work that into the animation of the character. But it's a lot of fun. I mean, if, if you're into animation and you love cartoons and making cartoons, it's, it's a lot of fun to uh, take these voices and put faces to them and bring these characters to life. So it's a lot of fun. Great question. It's frame by frame. That's why I love Erica, the robot, so much because- <laughs> You don't have to move her mouth. <laughs> there's no lip syncing going on. I just have to animate her head. Space Cubs, meet our new robot computer friend, Erica. She can scan space gems and tell us all about them. Uh, she's not moving. Is she sleeping? We need to wake her up. To wake her up, we say, Hi, Erica. Help me out, Space Cubs. Say, Hi, Erica. Hi, Hi Erica. Hi, Becca. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Space Cubs. Hi, Erica. Can you please scan the space gem? Okay. Please wait while I scan the space gem. This is an ultra rare space gem. Each character has um, the different mouth shapes. So there's like an S shape, an O shape, E, an N, anything where there's the extreme mouth positions. Uh, so I draw each of those individually and then through the language I just change the mouth to match the sound that you're hearing and that's how uh, that's how I animate the lip syncing. It's the last thing I do uh, because it's the most tedious. Most of it was probably from Twiddles and Josie. One researches the materials and then another one builds it so they get all that stuff. And what are some of the things that Twiddles has built for Becca and Zoe? Well, there's Erica, that he built Erica for them. He also built their jetpack. If you watch the electric space gem, he also gave... The infinity battery, yeah. that was for Erica. Yeah, that was one episode. Yeah. So Twiddles, who actually is on my shirt right now, this guy. Uh, Twiddles, he built all of the gadgets and gizmos and... Space gem locators. Space gem locators, right. So he's, he's been busy, Twiddles. It's fun to like be one of the main characters in a story. So it's exciting, but also like nerve wracking because you don't know how it's like going to turn out because they're just recording your voice and you don't like what's happening in the show. So you just record like the lines and you just have to wait and see what it will like quick. turn, yeah, what it's going to turn out like. Actually, believe it or not, over the summer last year, we started recording. Um, we recorded my nieces, Ava and Anna. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we recorded course. them, right? We recorded them over the summer. And then um, and Cameron, we recorded you, and I think in October yeah. or September of last year. So, um, so it's a long process. Um, it's, it, it was about, about a year to write and plan and then about a year to put it together. 
Um, so it's a, it was a long process to get to this point. I watched a lot of Spongebob. I've watched Bubble Guppies. Um, I still watch cartoons. I'll admit it. <laughs> it's great research. And honestly, I, I really started getting back into it when Maddie was born because that actually got me back into watching cartoons. I grew up on... I also watched Nihau Pai Land. That's a Chinese show. Yep. I grew up on like G.I. Joe and Garfield and Transformers. A lot of influences. Um, but now, honestly, you know, when Maddie was born, yeah, it was Nihau Kai Land. It was Peppa Pig. And a lot of Peppa Pig. Um, and even now, Bubble Guppies. Um, yes. And what's the other one? Paw Patrol? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of Paw, Paw Patrol. Patrol. But the, the great thing about yeah. these cartoons is, you know, it's written for all ages. It's written for kids and it's written for adults. So it not only keeps the kids entertained, but it also has a little something for the adults. And um, I think that's why we, we watch those a lot is because it influences how we kind of drive the story and some of the fun one-liners in there, especially... Cameron's character, Zoe, <laughs> her, her one-liners that come out. Sup. <laughs> Sup. <laughs> this is a solar space gem and is very common. Common means they're easy to find. Yup. <laughs> I really like the part in the cave where the two bears were yes. running away. Yes. They defeated all the blocks with... Jinx. The the, yeah, the yeah. jinx, the double jinx, triple jinx. Anyone else want to share their favorite moment? Sam was fighting King Glop and he was jumping on the Glop's heads yeah. just because it was a very action moment. Yeah, that's my favorite moment too. Epic battle scene. Epic battle scene. All right, everybody. Well, hey, listen, this was awesome. I mean, I, I'd like to thank everybody in the studio here for uh, putting this all on. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you at home for watching uh, and letting us uh, share our stories with you. So check out more Space Bears at spacecubstudio.com. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube if you YouTube Space Bears cartoon. We're, we're there. We got lots of stuff up there. So drawing shows, Chloe to the Rescue, 20 Tales, a lot of fun stuff. Thanks, everybody. happened to the yellow bear that was waiting for the block? Maddie and I are working on another series that's geared more towards the younger crowd. My youngest daughter, Juliana, is going to be voicing her own space bear um, that's going to be featured in a new show that we're working on called Space Bear Friends. And that's going to be more of a learning, uh, educational-based uh, series that we're going to be writing. Um, so a lot more of, you know, shapes, numbers, um, and different things. The alphabet. Yep, the alphabet, um, specials, science, math. Drawing. Drawing, right? We're gonna, there's going to be a lot of special guests on the show. Hi, I'm Becca. Hi, I'm Zoe. And you're watching Space Bears on WPAA-TV.